Welcome to the Believe Podcast Network SoCal Sweat. My name is Ann McDaniels, a former NFL cheerleader and product manager turned actress and model who dreams of being a UFC fighter. Meow. Learning strategies to help motivate others leads me to bring you interviews each week from a range of athletes, experts in fitness and nutrition, and so much more. Thanks for listening to Believe, the number one podcast for working professionals, and let's push our endorphins to higher performance through SoCal Sweat. This is your host, Ann McDaniels, and welcome to another episode of SoCal Sweat. Mental health continues to be a major part of our conversation and at the forefront of more research. The Emotional Freedom Technique, or EFT, is an alternative treatment for anxiety, emotional distress, trauma, physical pain, and PTSD. It's also referred to as tapping or psychological acupressure. Many athletes have also believed in EFT for healing pain after injuries or chronic pain. This episode features Emma Ward, who had tried everything to get over her divorce. After being introduced to EFT, Emma was so impressed by how it helped her that she became a certified coach herself. Emma will explain the EFT process and share her own experiences healing others through her own EFT coaching business. And we now introduce you to Emma Ward. And today I'm very excited to have my dear friend, Emma Ward, and her emotional freedom technique. How are you today, Emma? Hi, Anne. I'm brilliant. I'm great. Thank you. How are you doing? I am stellar in the conditions. Yes. Thank you very much. (laughs) You you get in there like all of us. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, you know, Emma, we are facing so much stress and I, and especially mental, mental health is so important more in this time than ever. And I'm just going to highlight something that I was very skeptical on what e- EFT is or emotional freedom technique. And I watched a new segment and I saw this athlete, her name was Adrian Cerullo. She was a marathon runner, a mountain climber, did all these things. And she had chronic, she all of a sudden had chronic back pain. And she had tried everything. She tried acupuncture, PT, massage, yoga, meditation. She re-injected her own blood, herbs, and only until she discovered the tapping workout. And these had been done for like four years. She'd been trying these things. And two sessions of a tapping technique, which you'll discuss, completely took away her back pain, which is just astounding. Wow. So it is astounding. Yeah. Yeah. So what what is your background in this and how did you get started? Please tell us all about you. Yeah, of course. Well, if you didn't know, EFT stands for emotional freedom technique. And basically that's what it does. It releases negative emotions from the body. And I can go more into that later about the science part of it. But how I got into it is I went through um, a really traumatic divorce um, maybe 10 years ago now with my daughter. My daughter was about three or four. And as much as kind of, you know, forgiven as I was with my ex and I would never talk anything bad about my ex to my daughter or around her. I was always careful about being around her energy and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I felt that even inside my body, like I had so much anger in me. Like I could feel it in my heart, in my chest. Like as much as I wanted to be forgiving and open my heart and kind of move forward, I just, even though I went to therapy and talk therapy, which helped me a lot, um, I just had all these emotions and I thought, God, what do I do with them? Like, how do we like get rid of them or acknowledge them? And it was literally just me that like, Googling and researching going, how do I get rid of these emotions and feelings, negative things like taking over my life? Sure. And I, I came across EFT and I just did it myself, like just to try out over a YouTube, started tapping and saying, oh, all this anger in my body, I'm just so angry right now. And, and just focused on all the anger. And I just felt like, Oh, I just felt calm and release and I just, it just kind of floated away and I just felt, wow, that's like crazy. That's so amazing. I started to, you know, yeah, just research on it because I thought I just wanted the best for my daughter because she's around me and as much as I'm saying, putting on a fake smile and being, oh, hi, and, and trying to be a good positive mom, it's like all my energy on the inside wasn't positive. It was all negative and anger and hate inside me. And I thought kids are smart. They pick up on all sorts of things. And I just didn't want that negative energy around her. So I just learned this technique for myself, a technique to work on myself, to release it in a positive way. 
And also it was kind of nice and powerful, the fact that I did it myself. And, you know, I teach people how to, you know, you can do it on yourself too. Um, but yeah, that's how I got into it and researched and studied. And, and now it's kind of incorporated in my everyday life. Sure. Yeah. Now we, um, Emma and I, Emma and I have both worked as models together. Have you used these, these mm -hmm. techniques on modeling jobs when the photographer is, you know, being nasty or a director? Did you? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I have to laugh. I know I have to laugh. Uh, oh, well, not so much modeling jobs. I've never experienced any negativity with modeling, but more for nerves and anxiety on auditions yes. when I'm remembering lines because as you know, Anne, we get like a brain fog. And it's like, as much as you know your lines, you kind of get in front of your camera, and you get nerves take over. And so, yeah, I've literally sat in the car or I've gone in the bathroom like a couple of minutes before my audition and I've just tapped on the tapping points on my nerves and focused on the, the negative feelings. Like people, I just want to say that people, obviously I believe in the law of attraction and I love the law of attraction, but people focus so much on being positive and manifesting that they forget about the negative aspects that's still inside them. And with EFT, we are focusing on the negative to release that first and then we can be positive. Otherwise it's just a band-aid. You're just kind of just ignoring it and then just focusing on the positive. But yeah, not as far as auditions. Yeah. I, I'm like in the, the weirdo that's in the bathroom tapping on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have yeah, to copy that for sure. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Now, did your, um, did your, when you met with, with a psychiatrist or a psychologist going through your divorce, did that not help mm. you as much because it just wasn't, wasn't the type of mm. therapy that you needed? Yeah, well, honestly, it did. Talk therapy or the, the it, we, in because I was in England at the time, counseling mm -hmm. or therapy, it helped me realize certain things. It put everything into perspective for me and it really helped me a lot. But when I left, it didn't help with the emotions, because which is why I was like, wow, I, I acknowledge everything. I'm aware. I'm mindful. My head's clear. I understand so many things. But why have I got all this anger still inside me? Like it didn't help me with the emotion side, which is why I do work with therapists here in LA and all around the world because we kind of work together. It's not, you know, I, I don't want to sell, don't go to therapy. This is the, the cure for everything. It's great. Most of my clients do have a therapist and they do EFT and incorporate both together. So they're getting the emotional aspects and they're also getting the psychological and help that they need through a therapist. That's great. And I guess when I saw some of these news segments, it's all about acknowledging the negativity. Like you, it, you acknowledge it and know that it's there versus like you said before, just putting on a positive face or front and kind of, you know, putting it under the rug, your any, any kind of negative emotions when you can kind of come across as fake to people. I've, I've tried to cover mine and it's like, I, I feel like I'm being fake because I'm like not in a good mood. So I really think that this is a good way to acknowledge it because some people do ignore the problem and just keep going and then it manifests. So I'm really glad you found this and I really appreciate your introducing this to me. Now, I read a lot about the meridian. Um, in the science of, and this comes from Chinese medicine, correct? It's almost like an acupuncture correct. type of thing. It is similar to acupuncture, very similar, yeah. Yeah, it's similar to acupuncture where the needles go in through the meridians, and but instead of the needles, we're just tapping with our finger gently through the points. So basically the science part is that we've got meridian pathways running all through our bodies from head to toe, and they get blocked with the negative energy. So all we're doing is we're tapping on parts of these meridians and we're releasing the negative energy by speaking them and affirming them. So and like you just said, just acknowledging them and clearing the pathways. But yes, it's very similar to acupuncture, but without the needles, <laughs> the best way to describe sure. it. Sure, That's great. Um, and the meridian would just be the, the, the points on the body, like, like in a graph, like a meridian. And that's what you refer to. And yeah. when I saw this segment, I saw that you can very easily start with the karate chop of the hand where that, that fleshy part of the hand is, your eye, your nose, your cheek, mm -hmm. and your throat. Is, are those kind of the points that you can do, you know, just sitting, sitting at your desk? Yeah, and also, and it's like, because the pathways, if you imagine kind of like lines going all through your body from head to toe, mm -hmm. so even if you missed one and you, know, you, you just forgot and you went from your amygdala and calms down the limbic system and it releases the negative energy. So that's the whole reason why we tap in the first place. But if you do miss a point, it doesn't matter because they're all linked and we're all, they're all connected together. So yeah, yeah, and it's very easy and you can just do it at home. You could be doing it right now, you know, when you're in it, if you're in an interview, you're online or something, you have an audition coming up, 
you just get it you know you hear some bad news we've all got to be aware of our emotions and, and like you said we you know we want to be positive we want to be happy but and sometimes it's like we live in a world where it, people are ashamed to feel to feel negative or feel depressed or feel sad you know and that's why we all walk around with our masks on trying to be happy and and it, it's sad really because you know we should embrace our emotions there's nothing wrong we're not you know we're not robots we're human beings with with negative emotions and feelings and and being aware of them and this is a great tool to just be aware release them and then move on and, and be positive that's great again. and is there i feel like there's so much anger in the world right now are there specific things you can do around yeah. the, the anger emotion yeah oh definitely i mean you know just by acknowledging and, and tapping on the karate chops is where we affirm what emotion we're feeling so even though i have all this anger in my body and i'm feeling so angry it, you know right now i choose to love myself i accept it and i choose to let it go and then we can go to the points in our bodies all this anger and just focus on that anger yeah. and then when you kind of feel a release once you've tapped you know through the points with the anger or the negative emotion you're feeling you'll kind of feel it in your body like a shift it's sometimes good to have a number so if you say to yourself oh i'm feeling like a, a 10 out of 10 anger like all this 10 out of 10 anger so you can tap just for yourself and just tap around the points and just focus on the anger and where it is in your body. That's a good one too. So just say, I feel all this anger in my heart. I feel it in my chest. And then when you feel that kind of release a bit, just ask yourself, you know, what number am I now? Oh, it's kind of gone down a little bit. It's kind of a seven now and you just keep going down and release it. And then once it's gone really far down and you don't feel it so much, then you can focus on the positive. Even though I had this anger, I choose to feel positive. And then just tap on the points and focus on the wonderful things that you're positive about and the things that you're grateful for. Just shifting your, your mind process, you know, just shifting all your positive energy. Great. And then all. do you end with the positive or do you start with the positive of being thankful for things and then going to the negative of acknowledging things? No, definitely focus on the negative. What, well, whatever you're feeling, just focus on it and release it first. Because it's like I say, if you, you know, if you fall down on the ground and you kind of graze your knee and you've got some dirt in there, you don't just get a Band-Aid and put it on straight on the knee. First, you clean off the dirt, you clean off the blood and the wound, and then you put on the Band-Aid to heal. So that's what we're doing with the energy system. So first, we focus on the negative. And then we clear the energy and then we are reaffirmed with the positive. Oh, okay. That's, that's, so, that's a great analogy actually to use. Now, besides, besides yeah. just like trauma and things like that, there, there are, EFT can also kind of cure addictions, physical pain, insomnia, um, and, and, every, and a, lot, a lot more. Um, how would you, if yeah. someone were to be a drug addict, for example, and they, they're suffering this great addiction and they're trying to... They're doing everything they can. Um, how would that go? If someone's, would you tap when you wanted yeah. to use or when you wanted to drink or wanted to engage in activity? Right. Well, yeah, I understand. So, I mean, firstly, all I do is tap, I go straight to the emotions and about your self love and your self esteem. So, I mean, things like these, like huge traumas and issues that we have. You know, I would suggest seeing a, a licensed certified practitioner because this would go back, you know, deeper and deeper. So I might go into the emotion, like, what do you feel about yourself? You know, and it might go back to like self-loathing and not respecting and loving, you know, and, and this drug use is a mass possibly. I would go back to childhood and I would clear up all the traumas from the past. And it can I just, it called follow the, trust the process. So basically I would get the client to tap on a certain part of the body and say, show me a memory of your younger self where this began so for example a client might say oh i remember being 13 and having my first you know weed or joint or line of cocaine or mm -hmm. whatever it might be and then we would kind of sometimes tap on the younger self if this makes sense um there's another process that i use which is is similar to eft but it's called matrix imprinting i'm not, not sure if you I saw did. that on my website but it's basically the same did you yeah it's kind of I use this technique for, for childhood trauma because it's just basically it's like tapping on the inner child, for example, you know, a client says that and then we go back and we'll tap on the inner child and then we'll talk to the inner child and say, oh, you know, how do you feel about yourself? And we kind of clear up those issues from the past and we go back and we delve and we don't know where it's going to go. We just trust the body will show us what to work on and what memories to work on and what emotions. And we just, yeah, really go back to, you know, I just... 
want to get the client to love themselves again, respect themselves, honor themselves, because most of it is about, you know, lack of self-love, you know, self-sabotage. We don't believe that we're worthy of love. We don't believe we're worthy of, you know, having a good life. So we, you know, we do drugs, we self-sabotage, we hurt people, we hurt ourselves. So yeah, a lot of delving and back into the childhood, unfortunately, we've all got kind of issues from the past. It doesn't just come out for the sure. blue. And especially in the entertainment business, because I feel like it's, it's just so competitive. I mean, other industries are as well, but I see so many people okay. just, you know, self-sabotaging themselves. And the minute, you know, someone does better than them or they just absolutely just, mm -hmm. they can't handle it. And it's just like, and look at, I, I do also yeah. look at how many people have left Los Angeles during COVID because it's almost like, oh, wow. you know, only you, it's, it's, you have to have a mental strength to, to survive this business and, and maybe, and, and good for them mm -hmm. if they want to make changes in their life. That's awesome. But I've heard a lot of people just say, oh, I'm never going to make it anyway. I'm just going to quit. And especially now, this was the universe telling me yeah. to quit. Well, you know, and that's 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 fine. And I hope I wish them a better, you know, a, a great option for their second life. But it's just it's it's being mm -hmm. strong in your head. Now, when you talk about um, when you said inner child, I also think about children. And um, have you yourself yeah. worked with children as clients? I have had a few children actually. Yeah, I mean, I first started with my sure. daughter. <laughs> I um, mean, it was, it started as a simple thing as growing pains when she was six. And she said, I'm getting all this pain, mummy, in my legs and my knees. And I was like, oh, that's growing pains. Let's just tap on that. So we, you know, I would just tap on her and, you know, so she kind of, it's just so important for children because start them off at an early age to be knowledgeable of their emotions and also know that it's okay for them to feel a certain way. I just think it's amazing. I mean, ideally I'd love to bring this into schools and I have worked with a couple of schools and incorporated it into the classroom um because we're all you know we, we never taught about emotions you know you don't go to school and they're like oh how are you feeling today and emotions sad angry happy like it's just really important i feel as a young age to just be able to learn and acknowledge our own emotions i think it's even more important now because of the angel they're not as kids are not as social and i think some of the zoom schools yeah, are really doing a really. number on these kids as far as you know if someone has a learning disability how can uh, they keep up some kids don't want to be seen i i read an article that one child did not want to want to be seen like because they always sit in the back of the classroom and they're very self-conscious. So now that they're front and center on a Zoom call, um, it made them very, very self-conscious. So I think that your work would be fantastic. And kids learn by watching and, and adding that physical activity of tapping. I would think that it would resonate more with them because they would, they would attach a physical activity to an emotion and they could use it the rest of their lives. So I, I think that'd be a wonderful school yeah. program. It's just a matter of, of funding, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, oh, it's, a, it's tough. But, you know, even parents, you know, any parents listening out there could in court, you know, if their children are going through something, you know, just even just teach them how to do it. They can do it themselves if they're embarrassed of, you know, being around people. They can just do it themselves at home sometimes in the mirror. I mean, I, I taught a couple of kids that were performers and, and Disney kind of stars to, you know, and they were suffering from anxiety and stage fright. So she now does it all the time for herself and it's helped oh, her that's immensely. great or they're in fear of their stage moms <laughs> you know <laughs> I've, we've seen oh gosh yeah the tiara oh that's good <laughs> you better win right, exactly <laughs> oh that's cute um but on that same note what if a child had you know sometimes autism you, the kids do not want to be touched it's it's you know being around in close proximity how do you, would you deal with someone like that, um, that, or, or even an adult that just doesn't like to be touched and how would you work on them? Would you teach them to do for themselves? Well, they do do it themselves. So when I'm with, in a session with a client, whether it's Zoom or whatever it is, I, I do it too, but I do it on myself and they copy off what I do. So if they're okay with touching themselves and on the faces and things and the tapping points, then they just follow what I do. So yeah, I, I never uh, touch people apart from the matrix sometimes, maybe their fingers, but no, it's, it's, they can just do it themselves. And I think it's really good because they can empower themselves because they realize that they're actually healing themselves and they are the boss of their own lives. Like they are in charge. They're not being codependent on somebody else. I'm just guiding them to be them, their better selves and, and just guiding them really. And they are empowering themselves by doing sure. it. Sure. Now, because you, you go get into people's emotions and lives, what is your training behind that, uh, behind EFT? What did you have to go through to get certified? Yeah, 
yeah so um i came when i came to america i i trained with um a teacher called rob nelson who was live lives in santa Ana, or is it santa rosa up up north somewhere <laughs> a few about five Probably hours santa from rosa. la and santa rosa yeah that's it north so yeah i trained with him and i got my certifications levels one and two and then i became certified and get my certification and then i also that's when i decided to also get certified in the matrix too so it's just good to have a lot of tools under your belt some clients love the matrix because it's it's kind of deep and it's fast and effective and some people just prefer the, the eft in the general tapping sure. technique but yeah i trained here and it, yeah it's, it was amazing i loved it met some great friends and we all you know kind of support each other and and I too. think this technique is great for people that don't want to seek a counselor. Sometimes I like I, I think I try to go one once or twice. Yeah. I just didn't like to sit there and talk about myself and my emotions. I had a really hard time with it. And I'm like, I don't ever want to go back there again. Um, something like yeah. this would would definitely appeal to people that really don't want to sit there and or I mean some people love therapy and it works for them and it's fantastic. I just was it didn't work for me at all. And something like this certainly would. Um because it's something you can even do in your yeah. car with road rage. I mean, I just think it's a great go-to quickly and not sit there and talk about <laughs> it. So, um, yeah. No, it's 100% right. Because it's very, you know, it's very, you know, talking about all your emotions and volatile yeah. to go in there and, and talk about things and about yourself, like you said. But with EFT, I, I'm quite a straight to the point practitioner. I'll just, yeah, we we'll just get straight to the point, get rid of all the negative rubbish that we tell ourselves and clear all the energy and, and focus on that. And it's just very fast and effective too. Like some people can be in therapy for years and within, you know, five sessions, I've got, you know, the best results and it's just so much faster and effective. Sure. And so many people love their pets. Their pets are their children. It, does this work on pets or has this been tested? <laughs> Oh my gosh. I've heard, I've never done it with pets, but I've heard some of my other practitioners and my trainer too. He, he did it with, <laughs> this is so crazy. His neighbor's dog was barking and keeping him and his children awake. So he, he did surrogate tapping. So there's something that we do called surrogate tapping. This is a little woo woo, <laughs> but it's all very woo woo. <laughs> we tune into the energy of the dog and well, this is what he did, tuned into the energy of the dog and he tapped as though he was a dog. So he would say things like, even though I'm barking because I'm so scared and I want to protect my family, um, I'm a really good dog and I love myself. <laughs> and he started tapping. I know it's so funny. And he and, and I've tried it too on certain things like that the noisy neighbor, for example, or because we tune into other people's energies. We're all very telepathic. You know, we're all connected to each other with energy. So anyway, this trainer, yeah, and the dog calmed down and he basically, and he did it on a plane one time. A baby on the plane was crying for ages. So he tuned into the baby and he started tapping like quietly on the plane saying, I'm a little girl. I'm really scared. I'm on an airplane. And the baby calmed down oh and it worked. Gosh. I was like, Whoa. It's, it's really funny. <laughs> that could be a comedy show in itself, but if it works, it's that's funny. brilliant. Wow. That's yeah, no, it, it's really good. Like cause that's called surrogate tapping. And I actually had a client of mine and she hadn't spoken to her sister for about 20 years and she had all this sadness and she didn't know how to deal with it. And she, you know, she was getting older and she wanted to reconnect with her sister and her sister wouldn't speak to her. So we tuned into her sister's energy and we tapped as though we are the sis her sister and we cleared the energy. And I swear within the next day she messaged me, she says, my sister reached out to me on email and they reconnected and they, they see each other and visit each other and it was wow. amazing on a negative this what, what about I, I think about like the funny aspect of like dating if a girl is stalking a guy or something she's tapping oh into his energy <laughs> you want me you want me. you know <laughs> and then you, you get want. some like home wreckers out there because i'm tapping and, and emma ward <laughs> oh my god I, can't, I know can you imagine even though i want to be with my wife i don't really i want to go exactly with this girl and no we don't that's <laughs> That's hilarious, but no, we do this of good intentions. We don't do it to manipulate people. Sorry, I was being the devil's advocate. We do it to, to help sure. people. No, it's funny. No, of course, it's hilarious. Yeah, it's just a joke, I know. But yeah, as long as you get kind of, you're doing it with good intentions and you generally want to help that person and clear that person's energy. Yeah, it works wonders. I've done it with people that have been, been in tough marriages too and they've got all this anger at the husbands and we've done surrogate tapping. Um, and I said, you know, we, we're doing this to help your husband and to clear his energy because he's going through a lot of stress at work and he's not going to do this work himself. So we said, well, let's help him and let's clear his energy. 
So we sent, we tuned into his energy. We tapped for him and we sent positive energy to him. And then the next day he came on with flowers from work. Like it's, it's crazy. Like it, it happens. Incredible. Not saying this happens all the time, but you've got to remember, we're, like I said, we're all telepathic. We're all energy connected. It's basically like, you know, have you ever done a prayer for somebody or prayed for you, send a prayer to yourself and then you get a miracle. It's kind of the same well, thing. And it's really just kind of stems from the law of attraction. I mean, it's very, it sounds very similar. Yes. Um, what if someone yeah. were to have, because we're very, people are very driven to success and I myself, how would that, mm. if you have goals that you just feel like are so lofty, is there something you can do with your technique yes. that would get you closer or, or just bring that to you in a faster, better way? Oh, yeah. Yes, definitely. I mean, again, like I said before, we focus on the negative first. So obviously we have all these goals and I've got my vision board and manifestations and my list and like, you know, we all love that and it's great. So I think to myself, then what's blocking that? What do I think about myself? So it's all about your belief system. So you might think, oh, I love acting and I love being on TV and I love being on set. And I'm so, I just, you know, I'm just so excited and you've got these goals and dreams, but then in your subconscious mind, you're maybe thinking, oh, well, I'm not good enough. I'm terrible. I'm too old. I'm too fat. I'm too this. I'm too that. Like all these negative things like programs that are playing in the background of our minds. So I would kind of tune into that and I would, you know, we might have some self-sabotage and beliefs. So it's all about the belief system, you know, which we need to work on. So we might say things like, or tune into those beliefs, you know, even though I really want to be a successful actress, but I'm scared I'm not good enough, or I'm scared I have this fear that I'm, you know, too old or I'm too this, like we all tell ourselves it's a lot of rubbish or because my dad said I wasn't good enough or because in the past at school, my teacher called me stupid. It's these tiny little beliefs that we've inherited from the past, maybe childhood, maybe parents, maybe partners, abuse that we've had in our past. That's kind of knocked us down a little bit. And that's the program that's playing in the subconscious mind. So we kind of have to release all that. So again, with the tapping, go back to all the negative stuff about yourself, about ourselves, like we do. And then we can clear the system and clear the belief system so we can actually truly believe that we are worthy of success. And I think that would be great incorporation. Most of too. us do. I mean, people that you know are working from home or, they're, they're, or their jobs were eliminated or, and they had to change, I think that would be a great thing for that. And also finally, um, I'm just thinking yeah. about someone with going through cancer or a terrible accident and they're just yeah. broken or they're chronically ill. Have you seen vast improvements on your end for people that are facing things like that yeah um i've had i've had cancer patients um ladies a lady i really helped her and she was it was all about again she'd suffered abuse from from past and it's all been blocked up energy i'm not saying this is a cure for cancer or anything like that again i work with emotions but it, it really did help her as far as i know she's doing great we reached out the other week and this was a while ago but um, she'd had abuse in the past and traumas as a child. So we cleared all the energy system and belief system from the past. And we cleared all the negativity about, you know, I'm, I'm scared I might die, you know, clear all that stuff away and just taught her to be able to do it herself too. And we just cleared a lot of, you know, traumas and things like that and all the negative energy around that and the fear and anger as well in hatred and anger towards others and, that just it doesn't you know it just builds up and builds up and it, that's what causes all these you know sicknesses and illness and things not being respectful of our emotions because we're all I mean especially men I've had a lot of men that you know they were raised that it's weak mm -hmm. to show emotions you know I've got to be the man I've got to be the provider it's my job and it's weak to cry I'm pathetic if I cry you know the fathers have been strict on them for example so that's they're the hardest clients too because they think it's weak to cry or show emotions which is not you know we all should respect each other and respect ourselves and release but yeah I have seen a lot of you know wonderful results from physical pain and things like that's that that's fantastic yeah. and on that same note I really like your example of when you pray for someone you wish them well and positive thoughts of course but this would be a better thing if, if, if a family friend or something is going through cancer, you can t actually tap into their energy mm -hmm. and then speak to them and speak w as mm -hmm. them in the first person and then tap and that would send that positive energy mm -hmm. towards them, correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And I, like I said, I have a group of, of us EFT practitioners and one of us might post, oh, please send some positive tapping and to, to my friend who's suffering. And then, you know, we, we all will do it's like you said it's a, a form of meditation a form of prayer 
and we're all doing it out of the goodness of our hearts. And I think it's amazing, the power of prayer, the power of good intention. Well, I just like it. Sometimes meditation can be very hard just to sit there and think and be with your thoughts. I think this is a great alternate. Oh, my gosh. I can't. I can't. can't. (laughs) Everyone talks about it, and I try, and I'm like, and then I I start, like, moving my leg, and I have a beat, and my head is, like, music. Um, Yeah, I think this would work better for people that it's, like, the other side of meditation, the same thing, just a little bit more physical um, and not so... Uh, should we say boring for some of us anyway um not ripping on it whatsoever <laughs> though I know we're all different. exactly of course not I love it yeah and like yeah we all have different techniques and like I said this is just another tool for everybody's toolbox you know and it, we all have different tools we all sometimes some of us look, love yoga some of us just can't, uh-uh. can't do it some of us love meditation it works for them and some of us don't and it's like we're all different and we've all got to find something that works for us and helps us and and that's it it's just another amazing tool to add to the toolbox absolutely but it's all good for (laughs) spiritual mental and physical health anyway so emma what are your future goals um for for your practice and also how has your business changed in the age of covid oh yeah well my office is closed and like it was you know everything got closed down which is actually fine because i'm still doing zoom and facetime clients but I mean, it's a hard time. People don't have the funds right now and they're all struggling financially. I am helping people the best that I can and will kind of, you know, help people on a sliding scale just because I want to, you know, I've got time right now. It's a little quiet and I just love helping people and it's all different. It's all changed, but I'm lucky and blessed that I can, you know, Zoom and work from home and, and still help people in that Absolutely. way too. Yeah, just a lot of writing. Yeah, a little bit of writing and things too, you know, and blogging and things like that. So yeah, of course, it's changed a lot. I'm not sure if the office will open back up and my office might not do because everything's kind of changing now into online and working from home. And it's quite nice to work from home. Yeah, it really is, especially (laughs) with a daughter. Is Bailey in school or does she have Zoom school, half in school? Yeah, she's got Zoom online in school, so she's just locked in a bedroom on the on Zoom calls. But she's she's enjoying it. She's still with her friends in class, but on Zoom, and she still gets to go outside after school. So she'll get to meet up, um, you know, with a couple of her friends after school and things, and get outside when she can. So she she's doing Good. really well. And she has, she's you. a lucky girl to have a mom like you. Because just I've known you for quite some time, and Aww. I just love your ability to help people and truly care. Um, and finally, what has been your favorite treat during COVID? What has been your favorite indulgent food or drink or, or guilty pleasure? <laughs> well, as you know, I'm British. So I, I go to the Bristol farms up the streets and they have all the British chocolate, like you won't even know, maybe Maltesers and Aeros and British chocolate. So they're all my little go-tos. And I just think everything in moderation. And I think we can get so obsessed with the COVID weight and the dieting and I know the gyms are closed. So I feel it's kind of tough right now for a lot of people, but there's all, there's just other ways I've been doing YouTube classes for exercise online. Um, you know, still walking outside, but yeah, we've still got to have those simple pleasures in life. And, and mine is my oh, British That sounds chocolate. absolutely delicious. <laughs> and for people to hire yeah. and find you, they can just go to your website, which I will certainly put in the links, but it's just EFT dash M award, correct? It's just eft-emma.com. Yeah, yeah, just Emma. eft-emma.com and um, EFT Emma. And yeah, people can just call me. My number's on there. I schedule a little chat. I give 15 minutes free consultation over the phone and, you know, see people's goals and what they want to work on and and have a little chat that way. And then, And that's great. And people can do it from anywhere at this point now with with your Zoom um, abilities, correct? It is true. Yeah. I've got some clients in England Good. still. Um, I've got clients. Yeah. All, all around that can just FaceTime is actually a big one as well. They, if they've got an iPhone, they just kind of set it up on the laptop and then they just FaceTime me and, and that works out great oh, too. Excellent. Technology. What would we do without it? I know we kind of curse it sometimes because of social media, but it's got, it its really pros. has a lot of pros <laughs> if, if used correctly. Well, you do such great work and I think the sky's a limit and I love the fact that you could potentially go into schools. And I also think about, um, this is a fitness podcast. So I just think about even professional athletes that could really use this. I mean, some, some players just get debilitated Mm. before games. I mean, they just get so nervous, even if they're a champion. And I think tapping would really help that. So it might be interesting to like 
get yourself 100%. into the, some of the coaching staffs. And um, I know the Mamba Academy, I think it's, I think the Kobe Bryant's Mamba Academy has been changed. They, they changed the name, but there's a lot of kids that go there and they're raising champion athletes. And that is also in California near us. So that might be an interesting thing for you to get into as well. I mean, yeah, definitely. Yeah, anything to do. Yeah, fitness and and also children breaking out into the not children, you know, children breaking out into the entertainment business, young Disney stars and things and teenagers kind of breaking out into the business that may, you know, kind of get caught up in the whole world of celebrity and you know, things that we go through and comparing ourselves and that kind of negative negative aspect of it. But yeah, and sports and the nervous energy. I mean, there is a, I can't remember what athlete it was, if you Google it, and there's an athlete, a professional runner, and he taps all the time. And you'll see a video of him. And before he sets off, he's just touching, like tapping on the on his points on his face and then he takes off. Oh, it's so that's, cool. What a great example for, <laughs> um, for people that are, would be naysayers yeah. on the athletic side. That's, that's, that's great. I think it would work tremendously for certain players. Um, yeah, because there's a lot of failure, failures because we all, we, you know, to be successful, we've got to fail. So again, we've got to tap away because we think, oh, we failed once. So I've, I've, you know, I've lost this race now. So that means I'm going to lose in the next one. So we've got to release all that negative rubbish we tell ourselves and, and release all that energy. So the next time we can perform better and be even more better than or we were Or even before. if they're suffering something in their life. Like I have a friend who has an NFL player as a client and he's being, he's being stopped mm. by by some you know major fan and it's affecting his playing it's affecting his everything so he is he's more on a security end of it but something like tapping could could possibly help and tap into her energy and get her the f out of there (laughs) so (laughs) yeah exactly yeah for sure yeah people are going like i said you're performing and there's personal things maybe parents or things going on at home maybe you're going through divorce and you've still got to go out there and perform to the top and the best of your abilities so yeah for sure all the inner work is so important and I just think it's so important to acknowledge it and release it and acknowledge what a wonderful human beings we are and how powerful we can be and respect and appreciate and love ourselves. Well, Emma this was yeah. has been great and you've certainly opened my eyes and I must say that I was kind of a naysayer in the beginning if I didn't know you so well I wouldn't <laughs> have you know looked into it as deeply and I think it's just another great method that we can use if other things don't work. And I think for me, that would be a go-to versus anything else because it just makes you acknowledge it and you don't have to talk to somebody. You don't have to go close your eyes and, and think this would be a great technique. So I think you've, you you could help a lot of people and you already are. So I really thank you for joining us today. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Anne. And if you need anything, you know, I'm always Absolutely. here for you. Well, hire Emma Ward <laughs> as an EFT practitioner. You will not be sorry. Thanks again, Emma. Lots of love to you and <laughs> Bailey. You, and that was Emma Ward, whose energy healing through EFT tapping on meridian points helps boost our overall mental health. Please stay tuned in next week, where I feature TED Talk speaker Alexandra Catalano, her popular Eat Cute wellness business, and the foods she suggests for a total body makeover. We appreciate you for listening, and please subscribe and rate the show on iTunes. You can also listen on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Luminary, Tuned In, or at Bleaf.com. You can reach out to me for any questions or topics you'd like covered on the show at Ann McDaniels. And I'll see you next time on Soap.